Coming up next, Comcast Business Class Startup Profile. The Bay Area has long been a home to dreamers and entrepreneurs whose ideas, innovation, and energy have transformed the way we live. Hi, I'm Mark O'Leary, Vice President of Comcast Business Services. We're proud to support Bay Area businesses with advanced internet, voice, and video technologies that help them bring their ideas and aspirations to life. With over 50,000 business clients in the Bay Area and Central California, our business platform offers advanced features to meet the unique needs of small business. That's why we're proud to sponsor tonight's Comcast Business Class Startup Profile, highlighting small businesses ready to bring us the next big thing. Enjoy the show. I'm Edith Young, the executive producer of BizTech Day Entrepreneur Forum. Welcome to Comcast Business Class Startup Profile, a glimpse of some of the hottest entrepreneurs in the Bay Area. Tonight, I'm very excited to have Lila Jana, um, the founder and CEO of Samasource. So Lila, tell us about Samasource. What is it about? Sure. Uh, Samasource is a local Bay Area nonprofit that connects women, youth, and refugees living in poverty to dignified digital work. Digital work for us is anything that you can do with a computer and an internet connection. So it includes um, very basic web-based tasks, which we call micro work that you can do in one or two minutes, all the way up to more complicated work like transcribing audio, uh, captioning videos, or building and maintaining basic websites. How did you come up with it? Um, well, the idea has had kind of a long gestation period. I first got involved with African development 10 years ago um, when I was a, a bored 16-year-old living in Los Angeles. And I was lucky enough to get an opportunity to travel to Ghana and be an English teacher in a rural village. And that was where I was first exposed to this um, enormous problem of wasted talent in the developing world. Wow. So from then, I sort of um, I worked in the World Bank and I worked for various development institutions and I got the idea to start this when I kept being told by people on the ground in Africa that the number one need they had was good work, good right. jobs, um, right. and there just weren't enough development organizations really focused on providing jobs to the people who needed them. How do the people over there find, find work and how do you actually make that connection? Sure. Well, we think of ourselves as a social business, which means we really serve two sets of customers. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, we have our paying customers here in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, which are small businesses, large businesses, and nonprofits right. with technology needs, technology services needs. Okay. And on the other end, we serve our beneficiaries or our workers. And these are people who are living in poverty, mm -hmm. who are youth between the ages of 16 and 30, okay. women from marginalized areas, and refugees generally living in refugee camps. Okay. Um, and, you know, we we perform the service to them of finding them good work. And how would you determine if they can, they know how to perform the work? Sure. So um, our process involves screening and selecting what we call service partners. Okay. Um, so rather than manage all of these individuals um, as individuals, we manage them through service partners. These service partners are grassroots small businesses. So it might mm -hmm. look like, say, a small business founded by a woman in rural Kenya right. with five computers and an internet connection and a small office. Wow. It might also look like a nonprofit organization that does computer training for, let's say, youth. Um, once we identify these organizations, we put them through a social impact and a quality screening and a, a training that lasts about a month that okay. includes a live training and a virtual training. Oh, wow. And at the end of that, we have a very good sense of what kind of work they can do. It's usually in one of five areas, and then we start sending them work in that area after identifying clients on this end. How the Samosor got funded? Well, it took a little while. For the first six months, I was sleeping on my friends' couches. Uh, and then this summer, we were participants in the Facebook Fund Incubator Program, one of two nonprofits that got wow. selected. So while that didn't come with funding, it did come with access to amazing technology advisors. They were able to raise for us about $80,000 in angel financing from donors in the Bay Area. Wow. And we also recently received a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation wow. and another grant from the Templeton Foundation. Wow. Uh, so we're now in the process of scaling up. Thank you for taking the time tonight to share your inspirational story with us. Thank you so much, Edith. It was a pleasure to be here. This is Edith Young. Thanks for joining us at Comcast Business Class Startup Profile. We'll see you next time. Tonight's Startup Profile has been brought to you by Comcast Business Class. Fast, affordable internet, voice, and video for businesses who want to cut costs not corners. Call us today for a special offer.